Hello and welcome everyone, Lionheart here, and today I'm reviewing the QPad QH1339 gaming headset. Bye box. And here is the Beastie. Made in collaboration with Verodynamics, who are renowned for high quality audio products, uh, QPad have teamed up to make the most expensive gaming headset I've ever reviewed. When it was first released, it retailed at around about the £240 price mark. I believe you can find it on Amazon now. Link will be in the description to it. Uh, depending on where you look, for around about £210, £219. So still very expensive. It's not wireless, it's wired. So, I mean, the closest thing that I've reviewed to this in the past was the SteelSeries H Wireless, which was a wireless headset that could produce virtual surround sound. This is stereo audio, but... This is potentially the best headset I've ever reviewed, and I'll get on to why that is in a moment. First of all, we're going to have a look at the headset and what comes in the box with it, and then we'll jump on to sound, and then we'll jump on to the microphone, which I'm super excited about. Uh, stay tuned for the mic test. Very excited. Um, so let's have a look at the headset. First of all, the connections that come with the headset. I should say the cables are incredibly long. It doesn't actually say how long they are on the uh, on the box or the website, or at least I couldn't see it on the box. Um, but it comes with a two 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for the microphone, one for the audio. And I would hazard a guess saying it's probably mm, at least two meters of cable here. So a really nice long cable, uh, plenty to play with. And you also get a USB sound card with a 1.5 meter cable to it which has a mute button and volume control and you just plug in those 3.5 jacks there. We'll talk about the sound card a little bit later on. So the headset itself obviously you have a boom microphone. This is a condenser microphone using a cardioid pattern which is exactly the same that I have my blue Yeti set up to and again stay tuned for that mic test because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how this performs. Uh, those of you who've been watching my reviews for a while and those of you who've been watching my YouTube channel for a while know that I'm always on an eternal quest to find a headset, a gaming headset, with a microphone that is good. Um, there have been a few along the way. The Recently, the Sharkoon uh, G-Zone, or GS1 as I called it in the review, uh, and the Corsair Vengeance 1500 have had great or rather good microphones, especially for the price. Both those headsets come in at around about the 60 to 70 pound price mark. So this is a lot more expensive than that. Those headsets previously were let down by the lack of features, build quality, uh, and slash or audio quality. So does the QPad QH1339 surpass all of those in all other facets of, uh, of quality as well? We'll find out in a moment. Um, I was going through things that were coming in the in the box before I was going to look at more of this, uh, more of the build. So let's do that. The only other thing that comes in the box besides the sound card is this bag, um, a Berodynamic bag with the Q pad kind of little label there, telling you what you get. A little bit at the front, a little bit there, and then obviously the main zip to keep your headset in. Uh, obviously that front bit for the extra cabling and everything. So, um, no straps on the back or anything like that, but uh, I guess a good travel bag, especially if you're going to LAN events. And to be honest, if you are going anywhere with your laptop, your gaming laptop, or your PC, you're probably going to want to bring this along. Um, and we'll, I'll talk about why I want to do that with the sound and uh, microphone quality later on. But anyway, there's a bag with it as well. Bye-bye bag. Uh, nice that that comes along with it. I should say, actually, the presentation of this headset in its box was nowhere near as good as the QPad uh, QH90, which I did a review of previously, and you can find that in the description. Uh, so it was kind of a bit, um, I don't know, a bit disappointing because the QPad QH90 came in lots of nice foam padding, it had a special message from, um, I believe, the project manager of QPad or the director. Uh, it just feel, seemed a little bit more premium, whereas this is I mean, that was a, uh, I believe, an £80 headset. This is a 200 odd pound headset. This is a very expensive headset. So I just would have thought all the pomp and presentation would have been there, but it just feels a little bit, I don't know, it feels modest, which maybe that's what they wanted to go for. Maybe that's what QPad and Verodynamic wanted to go for with this. Um, it's got a really nice long boom arm on the microphone, so you can position it as close or as far away from your face as you want to. Um, we'll talk about the mic quality later. Very excited. Um, you have this big 
um, band here so it will support even the widest of heads. In fact, if I stretch it out to its maximum capacity, and if there was somebody else here right now, which there isn't unfortunately, I'm home alone, I could probably fit two of me in here, or two people. Um, so, you know, we could really get cosy. Um, but yeah, nice big band so it will fit the biggest of heads, and this does have quite an aviation style feel to it. That's because QPAT and Aerodynamics um, modelled this or styled this after certain aviation headsets that pilots use. Um, and I believe on their website they also sort of say, you know, both pilots and gamers need fast reflexes, so only the best! Um, that's cool. I, to be fair, as a gamer, I wish I had probably the reflexes of a pilot, but I, but I don't. Um, especially if you look at my Dota score. Uh, but anyway, it's it's nice that they've got such a good solid build quality in here. You can also take the popper off the top here for the um, the leather padding at the top, so you can obviously you know change that if you want to, or I guess give it a wash if you needed to, or something like that. But it just reveals the nice big solid steel band at the top, which just has the audio wires running over the top as well uh, from the headset. There, we'll just fold that back over. Uh, the ear cups are also, um, you can also replace them, you can take them off, give them a wash, give them a clean if you need to, or completely replace them, which you may need to do uh, during the five years that you're probably likely to use this, because this comes with an impressive five-year warranty. QPAT and Aerodynamics are quite assured that this is going to hold up and stand the test of time, so if you're going to use it for that long, if you're impressed with the quality like I am, then um, you may well want to look into replacing those ear pads at some point. Depends. Uh, how much wear and tear they get, but potentially quite likely uh, if you wear them every day or most days for five years. But again, this is kind of, again, the commitment that both QPAN and Aerodynamics have put into this. They really are toting this as a high-quality product. Um, so, negative so far, looking at it. It doesn't try to be, I mean, it doesn't scream gamer headset. You probably would look at this and go, oh, that's a gaming headset. You probably just think that's a, that's a headset. Um, you probably wouldn't realise that actually this is probably one of the most expensive gaming headsets you can get without going into a headset that has perhaps an XLR um, output to a, uh, a preamp or something like that. Which I have actually started looking into those kinds of headsets just to see if there are any are worth it that have decent microphones. The QPAD QH1339 stopped me looking for those because its microphone, which we're going to talk about now because I can't hold my excitement in any further. Um, it has a superb microphone. This has a um, condenser microphone similar to my Blue Yeti and it uses a cardioid recording um, pattern which is what I have my Blue Yeti set up to. We're gonna have a mic test in a short while um, but the fact that you have such a long boom arm means that you can position it perfectly where you want it. It can be right in front of your face, it can be further away and you can change all the settings uh, on your PC to support that. There's no software that comes with this and you don't need any software to make it work or even install the USB sound card that comes with it. Um, I have personally found, and you will see this in the mic test, that the microphone sounds better when plugged into the USB sound card. Now that is probably because the onboard sound card built into my motherboard, which is a Realtek one, probably isn't that good. For the, To make the most out of this, as other reviewers have recommended, you are going to want a dedicated sound card. That's not to say if you don't have one, it's worthless, it's not, you can use the USB one, but that isn't... It, it, the USB sound card is okay, but it's not a fantastic one. It's pretty standard, but it's okay, and it's nice that they at least included that with this. Uh, but yes, I found the microphone performed a lot better when plugged into the USB sound card, of which, in the mic test, which is coming up now, um, first off, you're going to uh, hear the Q-pad with it plugged into the USB, then you're going to hear it plugged into the... Uh, just into the computer via the 3.5 millimeter uh, microphone jack. Then you're going to hear uh, the Sharkoon GS1, which I don't have to hand, I was looking down to pick it up, but it's not there. The Sharkoon uh, GS1 or G Zone. Um, and then finally, we'll wrap things up by having a listen to how things sound from the Blue Yeti so you can compare. So, enjoy the mic test. This is a test using the QPAD QH1339 gaming headset for Lionheart's review of the QPAD 1339 gaming headset. And in case you missed it, that is the QPAD QH 1339 uh, microphone. So, uh, how does this sound? I should say this is using the 
microphone plugged into the USB sound card. I'm going to do another test in a moment with it not plugged in to the USB sound card to see if there's any difference for you guys. This is a test using the QPad QH1339 gaming headset for Lan Hearts review of the QPad QH1339. This time I'm just using the standard 3.5 uh, microphone jack, the pink jack, uh, rather than the USB sound card uh, to see if there's any difference in microphone quality when not using that sound card. This is a test of the Sharkoon uh, G-Zone uh, or GS1 as I called it in my review incorrectly um, for Lionheart's review of the QPad QH1339 gaming headset. This is the Sharkoon G-Zone. This is a test using the Blue Yeti microphone for Lionheart's review of the QPad QH1339 gaming headset. This is the Blue Yeti microphone. Okay, so that was the mic test then for the QPad QH1339. So, as expected, only the Blue Yeti really sounded a little bit better. And I say only a little bit better because that's all it was. Um... As you will have noticed, the uh, QPad QH1339 sounded better when plugged into the USB sound card. Again, that's because I feel that the onboard sound card of my motherboard isn't that great. So that's why it sounds better with the USB sound card. It has um, uh, better uh, drivers and whatnot and, uh, and hardware in there to make the audio sound better. In terms of um, sound audio, which we'll get onto in a moment, I found that um, there was no difference between using the USB sound card and just plugging it into my computer through the uh, front or back jack uh, to use the uh, onboard Realtek uh, sound card of my motherboard. So it was only with the microphone that there was really a big difference. Sound, I digress, sound. How does this sound? Because a lot of you may not even use the microphone, you might use a standalone microphone. How does this sound? Well. I don't have my own words to really describe this. I actually uh, want to quote another reviewer who, for the sound, basically summed it up in three words. Clarity, detail, and bass. Not only does this have the best microphone of any headset that I've ever tested and reviewed, it also has the best sound. And this is a stereo headset. I've tested virtual surround headsets and even virtual surround headsets that really do tote the fact that their virtual surround is perfect, is great, is superb. Um, the Steel Series H Wireless had very good uh, virtual surround sound and had great stereo sound. This has near perfect stereo sound. Vocals are nice and clear. Um, you can really hear the detail in the mids, and the bass is bassy. It's not overwhelming, it's not um, underwhelming, it's just perfect. You hear the right amount of bass for explosions and for bassy songs, where you still hear the audio with wonderful clarity. There is a great amount of clarity. In that sense, it is actually a shame that the mic is not detachable because I would love to just wear these out uh, into, plugged into my phone and, you know, I just wouldn't want to probably take it out with the microphone sticking up there. Um, but, um, yeah, that's kind of... I guess that's probably a little bit of a... A negative that I have with it, you can't detach the microphone, but seeing as it is a gaming headset and it's not uh, toted to be a uh, uh, an all-in-one media uh, pair of headphones, then that is fine. In fact, uh, if you are looking for something that probably produces very similar sound but has no microphone, Berodynamic also produce a great range of headphones, so that may be worth looking into there if you want uh, just great audio. But yeah, for the full package, this is really delivering on all levels. Um, I've been listening to music, I've been playing games, Battlefield. Um, you know, the the clarity and the detail you're able to discern just, I mean, it opens up a whole new uh, audio level of some of the various different ga uh, gun sounds. And you actually do, I guess, uh, almost respect some of the game developers a little bit more because you hear more variation in sound that previously was just all mingled together with other... Uh, with other headsets. So, again, for sound, a huge uh, tick in the box. For the microphone, a huge tick in the box. For me, I'm going to openly sound probably biased here um, because uh, I'm so excited that this is such a good microphone. I may be missing some negatives here, so bear that in mind. Um, 
but I, I can't find a flaw with the microphone, really. For one that's built into a headset, it's really good. I can, however, find a flaw with the cabling, and it's not that it's too long. Uh, while, personally, it's a little bit annoying that it's, it gets tangled up so much, it's probably because I have poor cable management, it is a shame that there is no built-in inline volume control or mute button for the 3.5 connectors. Um, it is, in that way, a sense, a shame that you have to use the um, the USB um, sound card, sorry, that comes with it to get the volume control and um, that mute button. But considering as my PC has an awful, well, relatively awful built-in uh, sound card, the Realtek audio there, at least awful in terms of, I guess, audio files. Uh, they'll be probably watching this review going, oh, you use onboard audio sound. No, no, get a proper dedicated sound card. I really should do at some point. But, um, but yeah, for those of you that don't have a dedicated sound card, I'd probably recommend using that USB sound card that comes with it uh, because it does make it sound a lot better. Apart from that, I really can't think of anything else um, that I want to say about this, so I'm going to wrap things up and give it a score. Well... I've gone on enough about it throughout the whole review, um, throughout the mic test, so I just hope you guys agree with me and can see how good a quality microphone this is. Um, maybe the recording doesn't do it justice, but honestly this is the best um, non-XLR uh, headset um, microphone that I've ever reviewed, that I've ever looked at. And I say non-XLR because XLR uh, headsets often go into a preamp where you can really finely tune microphone quality and volume and things like that, so they will sound better, and you really will get that studio quality microphone feel that you'll get with something like a Blue Yeti. But, if you want something all-in-one, which is something I did want for a very long time before I bought my Blue Yeti, and something I was still looking for while I had one, was a headset with a great microphone and superior audio, so that I wouldn't need a separate microphone, so that I could do Twitch streams all in one go, um, like that, without having to have a huge boom arm with a microphone in front of my face. Um, so, in fact, I, I now use this for all my Twitch streams. I still use my Blue Yeti for day-to-day uh, -day YouTube Let's Play recording, just because, as you did hear in the mic test, the Blue Yeti is still slightly better. Only slightly, but it is just a smidge better. Um, but this is so close um, to being on par with the Yeti and maybe maybe with a dedicated sound card you could actually make it sound just as good uh, obviously I have a built-in one on my motherboard and the only other sound card that I have is the one through the USB uh, sound card that is provided with this headset so actually I'd be quite interested to see if anyone does get one of these and does have a dedicated sound card or I'd perhaps like to revisit this once I have a dedicated sound card to see if that improves microphone quality um, be very interested there but give it a score well as I said at the start of this review it's the most expensive gaming headset I've ever reviewed I've ever looked at despite that I don't think I want any other headset but this. Um, it is lovely, and that sound, I, I, I wish there was a way for you guys to hear. Maybe if I put it over the... no. Uh, I wish there was a way for you guys to hear the clarity, detail, and bass that this has. Because it is wonderful. And it's, yes, so comfy. So well made. And again, comes with that five-year warranty. Only real negative besides the price is the fact that there is no inline volume or mute button on the 3.5mm cables. You do have to connect up to that USB sound card in order to get that functionality, which is just, for a, for a gaming headset and for one that costs this much, you kind of thought there might have been built in, or at least maybe something on the ear cup, I don't know. Um, that's the only slight niggle I have with this. Other than that, despite it being super expensive, and that is something you do have to bear in mind, despite it being super expensive, I think, honestly, if you're looking for the all-in-one package, superior microphone and superior audio quality, and you don't want to compromise by getting headphones and a separate mic or headphones and a clip-on mic or anything, if you want it all-in-one, if you just want it simple, all-in-one, then this is the headset. This requires no extra um, you know, preamp or anything like that. You can just wear it and you're good to go. And the quality, audio and microphone is great. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10, and it gets my raw recommendation. It gets a 9 out of 10... Uh, as I said, I like to normally leave a little bit of leeway because while 
I probably am screaming that this, to some, may be utter perfection. I always like to see there's room for improvement, i.e. that uh, mic switch and uh, volume control, and also because it is expensive. This is not going to be affordable by everyone, but if you are looking for everything all in one, this is your guy. So, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks to QPad for sending this over for me to have a look at. I love it. I love your microphone. Mwah. Um, <laughs> okay, stop making love to the microphone. Hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my other reviews that are linked in the description, and I will see you all again soon. Ciao for now.